Hey guys, welcome back to 90 Feet From Home. Today, we are gonna talk about farm systems. So minor league baseball, when it's affiliated with a major league club, is often referred to as a farm team or a farm system. And the farm system refers to any of the clubs within a major league franchise's overall structure. This is where prospects are sent and then groomed to later participate in the major league club at that MLB level. So there are also minor league clubs that are not officially minor league clubs because they're not affiliated. And these clubs do not fall under the oversight of the MLB commissioner's office and therefore they are not direct streams of prospects up to the major league levels. Now players from those clubs can be picked up on free agent deals by major league clubs and then sent to the minor league systems officially as sometimes happens with my hometown club the Winnipeg Gold Eyes who are a member of the American Association of Independent Baseball but are not affiliated with any major league clubs. So the term farm system or farm team actually dates back to the 1930s and it was just a basically a joke about how the like minor league clubs were growing players for the majors like a farm grows corn and the term obviously stuck from there. The teams themselves are not actually usually owned by major league clubs though some are. Most of them are independently owned and operated and they just sign two to four year contracts with, with their major league clubs and these official agreements are known as player development contracts. So like I said they're usually two to four year deals although a lot of times these clubs will continue to sign these two to four year deals over decades and decades using the same farm teams for a long, long time. So like I said, some minor league franchises like the Florida Fire Frogs, who are owned by the Atlanta Braves, and the Springfield Cardinals, who are, no surprise, owned by the St. Louis Cardinals, are actually owned by their main club, and therefore those PDC contracts don't need to exist. So the Northwestern League was the first of the minor leagues to be developed, and that started in 1883. And since then, there are 14 specific minor leagues with 160 teams spread between them. So we're going to take a look quickly at the different class levels that you're going to find in the minor leagues and which specific leagues you will find in those classes. First, there's the rookie leagues, which play shortened seasons from mid-June to August. So for this, there are two U.S.-based leagues, the Arizona League and the Gulf Coast League, and one foreign one, the Dominican Summer League. Then there's the advanced rookie leagues, which include the Appalachian League and the Pioneer League. And at this level, games do start to get a little bit more competitive. It's less advanced training so much as real games where they're going to be pitted against others at the same level as them. Then you have the Class A short season, and this includes the New York Penn League and the Northwest League. And from here, seasons start to get a bit longer as we get into the higher classes. At Class A, we start getting full seasons instead of those shortened ones. And here we find the South Atlantic League and the Midwest League. Then we get to Class A Advanced, and this can also be sometimes referred to as High A. And this is really where the road to the majors begins for most people players. A lot of these teams will be based out of Florida and they will work out and play at the same stadiums that their major league teams use during spring training. And here we find the California League, the Carolina League, and the Florida State League. Double A we start to get even more serious at this point and from double A you actually do sometimes see players getting advanced all the way up to the major league level, skipping triple A entirely. And here we find the Eastern League, the Southern League, and the Texas League. Triple A is like the baby brother to the majors. This is where the team usually goes most frequently to call up players if they need to fill in for an injured list player, a restricted list player, or if they just want to test these guys out at a major league level. This is also where you'll find players who are on the 40-man roster but have not yet made it up to the 25-man roster. And here the leagues you're going to find are the International League and the Pacific Coast League. Up until about 1997 this also contained the American Association but after 97 that no longer existed and should not be confused with the American Association of Independent Baseball, which I mentioned earlier, which plays home to my home team. So there you go, guys, farm systems. Now, I didn't break down all of the teams in each of those individual leagues because it's 160 teams and we would be here for about seven hours. But in each of the individual videos that I'm filming for the team's histories, I do include what their farm teams are at those more advanced levels like high A, double A, etc., etc. So if you want to know what a specific team's farm teams are, you'll just have to wait for those specific videos. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Remember to give it a big thumbs up if you liked it. Hit that subscribe button down below and ring the bell if you want to be notified every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday when new episodes go live. And of course you can always follow me on social media where I'm at 90 feet from home on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So until next time guys, have a great day. Bye!